Uh, good morning all. Um, in this lecture, we are going to see Unit 5, that is measurement and instrumentation. Uh, the syllabus of Unit 5 are your introduction to transducer, classification of transducer. Uh, your transistor, I mean, uh, transducer is classified into resistive, inductive, capacitive, thermoelectric, piezoelectric, photoelectric, all effect, and mechanical transducers. We are going to see all this type of transducers in this unit. And uh, classification of instruments, types of indicating instruments, multimeters, oscilloscope, three phase power measurements, instrument transformer, that is current and potential transformer, CT and PT, we call it. And uh, these are the topics what we are going to see in unit 5, that is measurement and instrumentation. And uh, coming to the introduction of your transducer, your transducer is a device which is going to convert one form of energy into another form of energy. So, like that we have uh, various definitions for transducers, but uh, the International Society of Measurement and uh, Control, United States of America, defines a transducer as a sensing device that converts physical phenomenon, it can be any physical phenomenon, into an electrical or pneumatic or hydraulic output signal. So, in, according to International Society of, Society of Measurement and Control, they define it as it is the device, sensing device, which is, which is going to convert a physical phenomenon into any quantity, that is electrical, pneumatic and hydraulic quantity. And uh, <clears throat> in general, we use transducer as a device which is going to convert uh, a physical quantity into an electrical quantity, that is it can be any form of energy to an other, another form of energy. So here we are going to convert it, uh, uh, the device is going to convert a physical quantity into an electrical quantity. So, uh, uh, we call those transducers as electrical transducers, that is a, a transducer which convert a physical quantity into an electrical quantity is termed as electrical transducers. Why? Because the output is electric, uh, electrical energy. So, uh, we call it as electrical transducers. And some of the advantages of electrical transducers are listed here. So, the advantages are um, the, it, uh, the electrical amplification and attenuation, that is uh, either increase in the signal value or decrease in the weakening the signal value can be done very easily and the friction effect uh, is also minimized with the help of uh, electrical transducers and the mass inertia effects are also minimized and it is going to have very small power requirement and uh, electrical output can be amplified to any desired value so you can increase the value to um, any extent uh, these are the advantages and some more advantages are, are also listed here so the output can be indicated and recorded very remotely that is uh, uh, we can uh, record and indicate the output with uh, in any remote places also and the output can be modified to meet the requirements of indicating and control units so we can easily modify the output uh, according to the value what uh, uh, the i mean uh, it is needed to uh, control uh, the signal and the signal can be easily conditioned and mixed, that is uh, it can be uh, make uh, uh, available to the thing what we need uh, as an output according to our uh, environmental condition or other factors. And uh, electrical outputs can also be easily transmitted as well as it has been processed. And so the basic requirements of transducer, uh, while uh, Working with the transducer, the requirements of the transducer are very, uh, redness. So, redness means it can be able to withstand uh, overload condition and other uh, external factors also. And linearity, second one is linearity, that is the output and input characteristics will be linear. So, so as the value of one quantity increases, other quantity will also be increasing. And repeatability, that is uh, uh, how many times uh, we give the same input, it is going to obtain the output that is what is termed as repeatability and high output signal quality the signal output signal quality should be very high high reliability and stability so this system should be reliable as well as a stable while do um, while uh, the operation is done and it should have a good dynamic response dynamic response means uh, uh, we if, uh, the, if the, cha the changing input value should, should be also uh, managed and it has been processed. That is what uh, the transducer should have a dynamic response and there is no hysteresis. Uh, there is a hysteresis should be, there should not be any hysteresis effect uh, in, in transducer. There, is, there should not be any formation of heat uh, the, using the transducer. 
and uh, residual deformation that should not, that should not be there should be no deformation uh, while applying load to the transducer that is what the meaning of uh, it so these are some of the basic requirements of the transducer and classification of transducer we classify transducer based upon the transduction form uh, what is what it be, what it been used i will explain what is transduction form and secondly it is classified as primary and secondary transducer and also it is classified uh, as active and passive transducers and also as uh, analog and digital transducers and uh, transducer and inverse transducers these are the way we can classify transducers and uh, coming to the explanation uh, based on the principle of transduction form that is uh, uh, if, uh, that is the physical quantity which is going to converted into electrical quantity by one medium that is uh, the me uh, by changing this value the electrical value is going to be changed so this uh, which value is going to get changed uh, by the physical quantity is yes, it can be either resistance inductance capacitance uh, these are the i mean uh, values which in turn helps the electrical value to get changed so that is what uh, is mentioned here so resistive is uh, so on the based uh, based on the principle of transduction form it can just classify as a resistive transdu transducer inductive transducer capacitive transducer piezoelectric transducer we know what is piezoelectric that means uh, uh, with the help of uh, force uh, i mean force energy is converted into electrical energy that is what the, the help of piezoelectric and thermoelectric means the heat is converted into electrical energy optical that is a uh, photo uh, photoelectric or we can, you can also ask it as call it as photoelectric optical etc and uh, the primary and secondary transducer that is based upon the application it is used it is classified as primary and secondary transducer your primary transducer is nothing but the input signal is directly sensed with the help of transistor that is uh, the physical phenomenon is directly sensed with the help of the transducer and it is converted into electrical form directly so this type of transducer is termed as primary transducer so example for your transducer is thermistor it is going to sense the heat uh, energy directly Uh, with the help of transducer and it is going to process it and it is going to give the electrical output signal whereas uh, when input signal uh, is sensed is first by some other detector or sensor and the output signal is given to transducer then the output signal is converted into electrical quantity then it is termed the secondary transducer that is we use another one more device or a detector or a sensor at the front end of your transducer which gives the input signal to a transducer obtaining the input from the physical quantity so this type of transducer is termed as secondary transducer so example for this transducer is pressure transducer linear variable displacement transducer so in pressure transducer we apply pressure over a, a sensing device and that sensor or detector will absorb the pressure and give it to the transducer in that way it is working so it is termed as secondary transducer and active and passive that is based upon the conversion method it is termed as active transducer or passive transducer so what is active means uh, it generates the electrical signal directly in response with the physical quantity that is it does not require any external power source in order to process or do the operation of conversion uh, so that type of uh, transducers are termed as active transducers where this type of transducer is also called the self generating type it is going to generate uh, the energy on its own and it is going to process the output that is uh, it is going to uh, convert the uh, physical quantity into electrical quantity so example for this transducer is taco generator uh, which is used for the measurement of measurement of angular velocity so we use uh, this taco meters in our uh, uh, machine lab so that is a device uh, and uh, uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, i mean it, it uses battery that is the external source uh, so it is going to be a passive transducer here uh, the taco generator means it, it generates the power with the help of uh, the rotation and it is going to process the output that is what uh, the taco generators do and thermocouples the measurement of temperature uh, it doesn't need any uh, external energy source for the uh, processing and piezoelectric crystal it is straight away it is going to convert um, your force into uh, electrical quantity and coming to passive transducers uh, it requires the electrical parameters that is resistance inductance and capacitance changes with the change in input signal so this values will change with the, with the change in input signal 
So this type of transducer is called as passive transducer. So example for your passive transducers was strain gauges and thermistors etc. And based upon the nature of output signal it is classified into analog and digital transducer. So analog transducer is a device which is going to convert the input signal uh, into an output signal in the form of continuous time function that is termed as analog that is it is going to give the analog signal as output that is continuous function of time as output. So example for this analog transducer of thermistor, strain guard, linear uh, LVDT that is linear old, uh, linear variable displacement transducer and thermocouple these are some of the examples of analog transducer. And digital taco transducers or uh, it is going to convert the input signal into output signal in the form of pulses. Uh, that is a, a discrete, uh, it is going to give a discrete output. So that type of transducer is known as digital transducer. And uh, coming to transducers and inverse transducer, we know what is transducer. It is a device which is going to convert a non-electrical or physical quantity into an electrical quantity. Whereas inverse transducer gives the function that is opposite to the transducers and that is the uh, operation of transducer in the inverse manner. That is it is going to convert the electrical quantity into a non-electrical quantity. So generally we use inverse transducers in many data indicating and recording devices uh, and also it has been widely used uh, in feedback measuring system. So the meter what we use that is voltmeter, ammeter, watt meter, uh, these uh, devices what we use in machines lab and electronic circuits lab or uh, inverse transducers, the inverse transducers that is it is going to obtain the electrical energy as an input and it is going to give the non-electrical quantity as the output that is it is going to uh, increase the value of I mean change the value position of your uh, uh, needle and it gives the output so it is going to be uh, it is doing the function of inverse transducer. And uh, the factors in which uh, the transducer or selector, that is selection of transducers, that is uh, uh, based upon the operating range. So how long, uh, how long it is going to operate, and uh, how much value range or range of value it is going to operate. Based upon that, it has been also it has been selected, and based upon the sensitivity, uh, that is the sensation of your physical quantity uh, range. It also it has been uh, selected. That is based upon sensitivity. And based upon electrical output characteristics and also uh, how it is going to withstand the environmental condition and how much error it has been produced and how much accurate it is uh, based on, on the on these six factors your uh, transducer has been selected and uh, the resistive transducer uh, coming to the types of transducer the resistive transducer resistive transducer transducer or those which the resistance changes due to the physical quantity uh, so uh, Pre, uh, initially your resistance changes with the help of this resistance your electrical quantity is changed. So we know the formula for resistance R is equals to rho L divided by A where rho is um, resistivity of material, L is length of the conductor and A is cross section of area. So this denotes that your resistance is directly proportional to your resistivity and the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to area of cross section. So as you vary these values, that is uh, as the value of resistivity increases, your uh, value of resistance increases. So why? Because it is directly proportional and as the uh, length of the conductor increases, the resistivity, I mean, resistance increases and the area of cross section increases, the resistance will decrease. Why? Because it is inversely proportional. So with the help of that, we are going to measure some factors. Uh, the measurement of displacement can be done with the help of uh, the length of the conductor variation. And the resistivity of the material, uh, the change will change the temperature. That is, with the help of that, we can measure the temperature value, and uh, that is what it is mentioned here. And uh, potentiometer, we'll see this topic potentiometer in the next lecture. Thank you all.